everybody, I'm Mike Kazmer, and today I'm going to be reviewing the recently updated Transition Sentinel. This bike first came out three years ago, and at the time it turned a lot of heads due to just how long and slack it was. And this new bike, compared to the old one, it's got a little more travel, it's up to 150 millimeters of rear wheel travel, still has big wheels, 29 inch wheels, and it got a little slacker too, 63.6 .6 degree head tube angle. Slacker, might as well go longer, right? Now it has a 440 millimeter chain stays compared to 435 millimeter chain stays that it had before. So a little bit longer, a little bit slacker. Let's toss in another thing, a little bit more progressive. The previous version had a tendency to go through its travel a little bit too quickly. So they increased the end stroke ramp up on this one. Yeah. Leverage curve has a little bit more ramp up. So you shouldn't be using all the travel when you don't want to. The frame looks a little bit different as well. It's got lines that match the Scout that was announced a couple months ago. A little less swoopy, a little more angular. It's got a nice integrated chain slap protector. Got a little mount under the top tube. You can hold tube or tools. That's something we've seen catch on this year. You got internal cable routing for the dropper post and the derailleur. And then the brake line is actually externally routed just for ease of maintenance. They've made it so you can have plenty of room to run really long dropper posts. So this one uh, on this side large actually has 210 millimeters of drop. So you can get the seat way out of the way. It's great for those super steep descents where you don't want the seat anywhere near you. The bike I've been riding for the last couple of months has the GX build kit. It's a smart build kit. It's got SRAM's workhorse 12 speed GX drivetrain, but then it has the RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork up front. It's the top of the line fork. We've got a RockShox Super Deluxe shock, SRAM's Code RSC brakes. So again, they're top of the line brakes. Stands Flow S1 wheels, and those wheels have a, a Maxxis Acid Guy up front and a Maxxis DHR2 in the back. And both those tires have the XO Plus casing. So again, pretty good build kit. It's really close to how I build up my own personal bike, just designed for durability. Nothing crazy light, nothing silly expensive, just solid, should get the top job done. Again, $5,499. There's another build kit above and a couple below, or you can get this as a frame only. Before we dive into those ride impressions, let's talk about setup on this bike. It's pretty straightforward. I ran around 28% sag in the RockShox Super Lux shock. That equates to just about body weight, touch above. Um, I did end up adding one volume spacer after a few rides. Just want a little more ramp up towards the end of the stroke. It comes with one spacer installed. Added one more in, just took a few minutes and gave me a little extra ramp up that I wanted. Trails that I tend to ride, they're usually a mix of kind of like flowy, jumpier trails, some bigger compressions, tighter berms, and some natural terrain. So I usually tend to run uh, my setup with a little more ramp up. So that additional spacer took care of that. Um, up front in that RockShox Lyric Ultimate, I ran 78 PSI. A uh, couple clicks of high speed compression and a few clicks of low speed compression from full open. So pretty straightforward. And it's worth mentioning the touch points on this bike, like the seat, the bar stem, they all really match my personal preferences quite well. So it was nice to just be able to hop on this, roll out, not need to switch anything or get accustomed to anything that was out of the ordinary. It doesn't hurt that transition happens to be based in the same town that I live in. So, you know, it makes sense that the bike would work well for the terrain that I was gonna take. So the Sentinel may have a head angle that looks like it was borrowed from a downhill bike, but that doesn't mean it climbs like a downhill bike. Luckily, so it's actually a pretty good climber. I mean, the weight is fairly reasonable, especially considering there's not a lot of carbon parts hung on this frame. It's around 31 and a quarter pounds. Uh, so pretty nice weight for this type of bike. You know, it's definitely aimed towards the descents, but if you do need to go put in some miles of climbing before enjoying those descents, this one's up to the task. It's a fairly efficient feel, especially if you're seated while you're climbing, you know, sit down, spin away does pretty well. That seat angle, 76.9 degrees. That's pretty standard these days, which is nice. I've kind of gotten accustomed to that. It gives it a top tube length of 613 millimeters. So again, all these numbers, they're just kind of right in the sweet spot as far as where modern bikes are starting to fall. So didn't take me any time at all to feel right at home on this bike. If you are looking for something that's super snap, you're just gonna really whip around the turns while you're climbing. I don't think this is the category you should be looking in. This bike is still geared towards the descents, but it does take care of the climbs quite well. Fans of the original Sentinel won't be disappointed by version 2.0. It hasn't lost any of its downhill capabilities, and that extra 10 millimeters of travel helps provide a little extra margin for error when things don't go quite as planned. You know, say you come blasting into a rock garden quicker than you intended, send a drop a little further than you meant to. It's nice to have the extra travel there just to prevent it from bottoming out too easily. Even though on paper, the Sentinel's numbers may seem intimidating, might look like it's gonna be a long, slack, unwieldy sled, that's not the case. It has kind of a nice, comfortable, carvy nature to it. Um, it's not overly stiff. You know, I'm not really sure if that's the wheels, the stands wheels, or the frame itself, or some combination of the two. But either way, very comfortable for long, rough descents. Never felt like my fillings were getting rattled out, or my wrists, or 
any of them are just getting shaken apart. It's worth noting, not all bikes feel the same. This one on the more comfortable side of the spectrum. By that same token, it doesn't really feel like a straight up downhill smasher. You know, we're seeing bikes emerge that are really mini downhill bikes. Uh, something like the Specialized Enduro or the Raw Madonna. Those bikes feel best when you're going full speed down the roughest trails around where the Sentinel feels a little more well-rounded. You know, I happily took it out for multiple four to six hour rides or even longer. You know, rides of big, long climbs, long descents, and it felt really well suited to that purpose. And so, um, you know, the geometry numbers are one thing, but the way it feels on the trail, it has a little more lightness, a little more well-roundedness to it, for lack of a better term. So um, kind of an interesting, interesting split we're starting to see. I think you could call this an aggressive all mountain bike, but you know, again, there's so many categories just know that it doesn't really feel like a straight up mini downhill bike, but it can do a lot of things really well. So quite versatile. All right, let's talk about some of those components. This bike has that GX drivetrain that I mentioned. It's kind of a workhorse in SRAM's lineup. It's not the absolute lightest, but it gets the job done and helps save money for some of the more expensive suspension components on this bike. So GX drivetrain, didn't miss a shift, worked well. Tires on this bike, Maxxis Asagai up front, Minion DHR2 in the rear. It's one of my favorite combinations. You know, if you put two Asagai tires on a bike, it tends to kind of really feel a little bit draggy, a little bit slower. This combo, still plenty of grip, but just feels like it's a little bit quicker rolling. Steeper seat tube angled bikes need longer dropper posts. Sentinel's got it, 210 millimeters on the large. Very nice to see that. One issue that I did run into was with the Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock on this bike. It had this knocking noise that was especially noticeable at slower speeds. Kind of, if you came over a bump and unweighted, you would just hear that knock, knock, knock. I found it super distracting and pretty annoying. Um, speaking with Rock Shocks, it sounds like it may have potentially had the wrong tune. So I'm going to dig into this a little bit further. And if you look at the written version of this review, there should be a better answer as to why that knocking noise uh, was there. Because I've had uh, plenty of bikes with a Super Deluxe on them without a knocking noise. So something going on with the internals. I'm gonna try to get to the bottom of it. But again, check out the written version for the answer as to why the shock was knocking. Otherwise, the only other uh, kind of component frame related gripe that I have has to do with the design underneath the lower shock mount. Transitions always talked about their loam shelf. You know, a lot of people post up pictures on Instagram showing all their loam, all the nice dirt that collects there. Well, this one has what I started calling a loam swimming pool. It's right here. And what happens is if you wash your bike and go on a really wet ride, the water just collects in there and there's no place for it to drain. It's not a huge deal, you know, it's a carbon frame, it's not really touching the shock hardware, but that water, it's kind of annoying that there's no drain hole just to allow it to come out. There are lots of other frames that have a similar design that have holes or little ports in there that can let the water drain. This one doesn't, so I'm not a huge fan of the loam swimming pool, but again, not a huge issue, but something to keep an eye on. All right, how about a couple comparisons? Everybody likes to know how new bike stacks up to other ones on the market. Let's start with the Sentinel versus the Ripmo V2 that recently came out. Both bikes are on version 2.0 and they both sit in different spots of a similar category. You know, they're both great aggressive all-rounders, uh, but I would put the Ripmo a little bit still on the more conservative side. Its head tube angle sits at 64.9 degrees. That's versus that 63.6 degrees on this. Chain stays a little bit shorter, overall wheelbase a little bit shorter. So that bike feels like it can kind of dart and dive a little bit more easily than the Sentinel can. Tables turn a little bit on rougher and steeper, just kind of rowdier descents. That's where the Sentinel shines a little bit brighter, a little bit more stable feeling, and it just has more composure when you're really in technical trails. So both bikes are very well rounded, but the Sentinel definitely a little bit more um, confidence inspiring on those gnarlier descents. What about how this compares to the Norco site? On paper, they're very close in numbers. Their site does have a little bit longer reach, a little steeper seat tube angle, but we're talking small differences. However, on the trail, you can tell one feels different than the other. The Sentinel has a little bit livelier feel, kind of feels a little bit easier to maneuver it, not quite as stuck to the ground, a little bit better support in the mid and end stroke of the travel when you set the shocks up to the same amount of sag, uh, where the site has a little bit more, kind of wants to sit deeper in its travel, especially when you're just kind of plowing down the trail. So that one's splitting hairs. That's a tough one to call. I can't say that one's necessarily better than the other, but they do have a different feel. So it's worth trying both if you're considering. What are the pros of the Sentinel? Well, I'd say it could make a great all-rounder for riders of the right terrain. If you've got some properly routed descents, big long climbs to get there, 
this could be a worthy candidate. It's also reasonably light considering the build kit, its intended purpose. Uh, so, you know, weight isn't everything, but it's nice when you end up with a lighter bike rather than some big, super heavy sled. It's also available in a wide range of sizes, uh, the small XXL, low seat tube height, lets you run longer dropper posts. So it kind of has all those modern amenities that you're looking for in this style of bike. Cons, I mentioned that RockShox Super Deluxe had that knocking noise. Again, digging into that a little further to figure out the reason there. And there's also that loam swing pool, you know, small little thing regarding the frame design, but I'm not a huge fan of that. But otherwise, it's really a well-sorted bike. It kind of hits the mark for what it's supposed to do. It does it well. Well, there you have it. That's the new Transition Sentinel version 2.0. Don't forget to like, subscribe, drop some comments down below, and also check out the new Pink Bike podcast that comes out every week. So if you want to hear us diving into the news, tackling some techie topics, check that out as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.